हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू एवीएलएस लेक्चर नंबर 31 पार्ट 2 सो दिस इज सेकंड हाफ ऑफ द वीडियो सो इन द फर्स्ट हाफ वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड न्यूमेरिकल नंबर 1 क्वेश्चन नंबर 1 सो लेट अस मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 2 ओके लेट मी एडजस्ट द स्क्रीन या सो नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर 2 रीड्स दैट वी हैव टू डिजाइन एन एनमोस डिफरेंशियल पेयर फॉर अ वोल्टेज गेन ऑफ फाइव एंड अ पावर बजट ऑफ टू मिली वॉट subject to the conditions that the stage following the differential pair require an input common mode level of at least 1.6 volt okay so that is the condition which we have to consider while designing this nmos differential pair with a voltage gain of 5 and a power budget of 2 milliwatt now what is the given data uh, mu and cox is given as 100 microampere per volt square lambda is 0 gamma is 0 and uh, vdd is given as 1.8 volt so let us begin with the numerical so design in the sense we have to determine the w by l ratios of both m1 and m2 and also probably we have to find out the rd value right so that is what we will do in this design we will find the value of aspect ratio that is w by l ratios of m1 and m2 and rd value now let us start with our solution so uh, power budget is given as 2 milliwatt now power will be given by vdd into id1 Plus ID two, okay. So it will be like ID one plus ID two is equal to uh, ISS, right? For a differential amplifier, if you apply the K KCL at this node over here, what do we get? ID one plus ID two is equal to ISS. So here we substitute it equal to ISS, and uh, ISS value is given to us. No, it's not given. We have to find out. So. ISS will be equal to power divided by VDD. Now power is given as two milliwatt, and VDD is given as one point eight volt. So ISS will come out to be two milliwatt divided by one point eight. It will be one point one 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 milliamperes. So in the first step, we found out the value of ISS. Next, uh, we have to find out the output common mode level in the absence of signal. so this output common mode level which is actually the next stage input common mode level is given as 1.6 volt and uh, this is given by the formula the output common mode level is given by the formula vdd minus rd into iss by 2 we have analyzed this before so in our case vdd is given as 1.8 volt and uh, we have to find out rd value from here right so uh, this voltage drop let me just show it to you yeah so if this is 1.6 volt vdd is 1.8 that means we have to subtract 0.2 volts from 1.8 to become 1.6 because left hand side and right hand side should be same that means rd into iss divided by 2 should be 0.2 and we consider the circuit is symmetric that is rd1 is equal to rd2 is equal to rd value and id1 is equal to id2 is equal to iss by 2 now from here we substitute it as follows uh, 1.6 is equal to 1.8 minus id rd times iss value is given to us one point i mean we have found out iss value 1.111 milliamperes divided by 2 so we cross multiply and we finally get rd into 0.55 milliamperes is equal to 0.2 so if you do 0.2 divided by 0.55 milli You will get RD equal to 360 ohms. So you can cross-check this answer with a calculator. If you get a different answer than this, kindly let us know. Now, in the next step, uh, we will find we have been given the value of voltage gain. So we'll find the value of GM. So we know that the voltage gain of a differential pair is given by minus GM into RD. Now, since both the transistors are symmetric, GM1 will be equal to GM2 will be equal to GM, right? Because the circuit itself is symmetric, and uh, we have AV as minus phi, so minus phi equal to minus GM into RD. RD value we just now find out, uh, found out as 360. So GM will be phi divided by 360. That will be 13.888 milliampere per volt. Okay. So we know now the formula for GM. It is square. It is uh, square root of twice mu and cox W by L into ID1 or ID2. Right, and what is ID one and ID two? ISS by two. That's why we have substituted over here ISS by two. Now in this equation, in the step number four, the only unknown is W by L. 
So we take square root on both the sides and we have W by L is equal to GM square divided by mu and C ox into ISS. Now GM we calculated as uh, 13.888 milli, the whole square divided by uh, mu and C ox is 100 micro and ISS value is 1.11 milli. So if you solve this in the calculator, you will get W by L ratio as 1736, 1736. So since we are assuming that both the transistors are symmetric, so the aspect ratio for both the transistors are also same. So W by L ratio of one uh, M1 transistor and M2 transistor is 1736. So we have completed our design. So finally we will draw the design circuit. So we have found out the unknown value of resistors that is 360 ohms and 360 ohms. And we also found the aspect ratio of M1 and M2, which is again equal to 1736 is to 1. Okay. Now, in the same numerical, it can be asked that in the above question, if the aspect ratio must be below 200. Now, this aspect ratio is quite high, 1736. So, we have to find out that if we want to maintain the aspect ratio below 200, what will be the voltage gain? So what do we do? We calculate GM. I mean, uh, GM has to be evaluated, but this uh, W value should be lesser than 200, right? So GM should be lesser than this value over here. And this value comes out to be 4.714 4 milliampere per volt. So if GM has to be lesser than that, then my gain is we know how much it is minus GM into RD. RD we already found out as 360 and GM value we found out that it, it has to be 4.71 4 milliampere per volt. So this product is 1.697. So that means if I want the aspect ratio lesser than 200, my gain has to fall below 1.697 value. Okay. So this completes numerical number three also. That's the continuation of numerical number two. Now let's move on to numerical number four. You all can cross check these answers. If you get any different than this, please let us know. Okay, fine. So in the question number four, we have been given a MOSFET differential pair wherein the input is a common mode input. As you can see, input is applied to both the gate terminals of M1 and M2. And we have a current source ISS, right? So what are we supposed to find? We have been given the input common mode level, a voltage that is one volt. ISS is given as one milliampere and RD value is given as one kilo. So we have to find out what is the minimum allowable supply voltage if the transistors must, rem must remain in saturation. So basically they are asking us to find out the value of minimum allowable supply voltage, uh, VDD level. Okay. So uh, here for M1 and M2 to remain in saturation, one condition should be satisfied. VDS should be greater than VGS minus VDS. So we know that circuit over here is symmetric. So ID1 will be equal to ID2 will be equal to ISS by 2 and VGS1 is equal to VGS2 because point P uh, is having a common voltage. So here uh, how it is same VGS1 is equal to VGS2. How can we say it is same? See the gate voltage VG1 and VG2 is basically same. V in of CM, CM, right? And the source voltage is also same. That is why we can say that VGS1 is equal to VGS2. So what is VX and VY? Vx will be VDD minus ID1 into, uh, you know, RD. And what is ID1? ISS by 2. And Vx is equal to Vy because both the sides are symmetric. So Vx is equal to Vy is equal to VDD minus RD into ISS divided by 2. Now from this information, if the transistors are matched, M1 and M2, if we consider they are matched, we can say that VTH1 is equal to VTH2, which is equal to VTH. And W by L of 1 is equal to W by L of 2 is equal to W by L. Now for M1 and M2 to remain in saturation, what can we write the condition as? VDS1 should be greater than VGS1 minus VTH, right? Why we are writing VTH? Because we are considering for both the transistors asymmetric. The parameters are matching. So what is VDS1? VD1 minus VS1 is greater than uh, VGS1 is VG1 minus VS1 minus VTH. So from here, VS1, VS1 gets cancelled. And what is VD1? We can write VDD minus ID1 into RD. And uh, what is this uh, VG1 minus VTH? VG1 is nothing but your input common mode voltage. So V in of CM minus VTH. 
So uh, we know that ID one is ISS by two. So we get VDD minus ID into ISS by two. So it'd be greater than V in of CM minus VTH. So we are finding the value of VDD. So VDD is greater than V in of CM minus VTH plus ISS divided by two into RD. Now, are they giving us the value of VTH? Let us check it out. Yeah, so VTH is given as 0.5 volt. Input common mode voltage is given as one volt and RD value is given as one kilo ohm and ISS is one milliampere. So let us calculate the value of uh, VDD. So VDD should be greater than this uh, V in of CM is one volt. VTH is 0.5. ISS is one milliampere and RD is one kilo ohm. So if you calculate this, you will get VDD equal to one volt. I mean greater than one volt. So this VDD greater than one volt is the minimum allowable supply voltage for M1 and M2 to remain in saturation. I guess that's what we are looking for, right? So for M1 and M2 to be in the saturation, your supply voltage should be at least equal to one volt. It should be greater than one volt, in fact. Then only M1 and M2 will remain in saturation. Okay, so this completes numerical number four. Let's move on to the last numerical. So in numerical number five, we have been again given a MOS differential pair with the input being a common mode input just like a last numerical. And this MOSFET differential pair must be designed for an equilibrium overdrive voltage of 200 millivolt. Now this circuit is symmetric because RD are same for both the sides. And also we can consider that the transistor parameters are same, right? So we can say ID1 is equal to ID2 is equal to ISS by two. VGS1 is equal to VGS2. That is we have seen in the last numerical. And we can also say that VX is equal to VY which is equal to VDD minus RD into ISS by two, fine. And we have been given mu and CX value as 100 microampere per volt square. And W by L ratio for both the transistors is same, 20 divided by 0.18. We have to calculate the value of ISS. So let us begin. So we are assuming that both M1 and M2 are matched together. So VTH1 will be equal to VTH2 and W by L of one and two are same. Assuming that lambda is equal to zero, we can write ID is equal to half mu and CX W by L into VGS minus VTH the whole square. Now we know that M1 and M2 transistors carry a current which is ISS by two, right? So how can we write the VGS minus VTH equilibrium value? So from this formula, we can take square root and we will get square root of ISS into divided by mu and CX W by L. Now why we have ISS, we have twice uh, ID and ID is basically carrying uh, ISS by two, right? So twice ID will carry ISS current, correct? So that's why we have ISS over here. And uh, this VGS minus VTH value should be equal to 200 millivolt. That is the equilibrium overdrive voltage. Overdrive voltage is VGS minus VTH. So we have been given the value of VGS minus VTH as 200 millivolt or 0.2 volt. So from here we have the value of mu and CX, W by L, only unknown is ISS value. So how can we calculate ISS value? So ISS value will be, we can take square on the both the sides. So we'll get VGS minus VTS the whole square, right? Into mu and CX into W by L. So VGS minus VTH is 0.2. So 0.2 square into 100 micro into 20 divided by 0.18. And that if you work out in the calculator, your value of ISS will come out to be 0.44 milliamperes. And that is what we were looking for. The value of ISS came out to be 0.44 milliamperes. So with this, we have completed uh, question number five, numerical number five. And uh, with this, we have completed the uh, remaining pending numericals from uh, you know, AVLSI lecture number 31.2, right? So next time we will start with a new topic on differential amplifier. So until then, have a good day and thank you.